Hello, everyone. My name is Brian Parman. I'm the State Ag Finance Specialist with NDSU and uh, Associate Extension Professor. And today we're going to start our uh, do the webinar that we, we do every year um, that uh, has to do with uh, backgrounding and finishing cattle in North Dakota uh, this year for fall of 2024, of course. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and be going through a series of, of PowerPoints um, here uh, to, to sort of illustrate what these scenarios look like financially uh, for heifers and steers. And I, I, I always try to make sure I, I, I show some of the terms that I tend to use if you've never seen any of the webinars I've put together on this topic before. Or if you're new to the business, maybe you haven't heard some of these or know what my definition is because it can change depending on who you talk to. But if I'm discussing weaned calves, those are going to be typically your 450 to 650 weight calves. And that that's this tends this group tends to have the largest price differential between heifers of the same weight and steers uh, is your weaned calves. If I say backgrounded uh, cattle. Um, backgrounded animals, that's going to be 750 weight to approximately 900. Uh, and the price gap on those between heifers and steers narrows uh, dramatically, you know, going from as much as 20 to $30 per hundred weight down to $5 per hundred weight. And in this case, uh, this, this most recent fall, the, the gap disappears during some weeks uh, entirely, where, where they're basically a 800 weight heifer is worth the same as an 800 weight steer. Uh, in fact, as of Monday, 900 weight heifers and steers were both uh, Monday of October 28th, 2024, were both worth the same $240 per hundred weight. And then you've got finished cattle uh, in these scenarios, we're calling them uh, 1,400 pounds. And then the price gap between heifers and steers in almost any given year uh, pretty much disappears. And I show this chart here just to show, and, and we're all familiar with it if we've watched cattle markets at, at all, but the fact that there tends to be, and this is kind of the principle I'm talking about when, when I say we're hef heifers and steers, the price gap closes, but with, with respect to both heifers, weaned heifers, and then backgrounded heifers, and, as well as steers, the price per hundredweight tends to uh, be the highest for lighter weight animals. We're all aware of that. And then the price per hundred weight drops as they get heavier and heavier all the way out to eventually to finish. And the reason for that is, uh, you know, feedlots and, and backgrounding operations, a lot of the, many of the ways, one of the ways that they make money, the other way is, you know, market timing and so forth. But one main reason is they, they make their, their profits putting on weight. And if you're taking an animal into your operation, a heifer or steer or a weaned calf at 550 pounds, there's a lot more weight to be put on. So if you're making five cents a pound, 10 cents a pound, putting the weight on, uh, not only that, but they tend to, you know, the, the lighter they are, they can, they can gain a little bit quicker, heavier they are. It takes more feed to put on each pound. So there's a lot of, a lot of room there to put that on. And as a result, finishers and, and feeders are, are willing to pay more per hundred weight for lighter weight animals. That's, pretty much the case mo almost every single year. Uh, and this one is no exception. Then the other, the other thing to, to keep in mind, and, and I show these charts every, every year that I do these presentations. And I realized that if you look at the top of this slide, it says this, this research came out in the year 2000. And while the relative price of corn is, is changed since then, the relationship that this chart shows has not. So if it makes you feel more comfortable, you could take instead of a dollar sixty eight being le uh, uh, less expensive or cheap corn, make it three fifty, and instead of three fifty being expensive corn, make it six fifty or seven bucks, and then you know something there in between. It doesn't change the relationship, which is when feed prices are low in general, corn and uh, as corn as well as other feedstuffs, the price premium for lightweight cattle is much higher than than. Um, than it is when pri uh, uh, feed prices are low. So in other words, the spread between say a weaned calf and a eight, eight, 850 weight backgrounded calf is much greater when, when feed prices are low, okay? Because there's a lot of money to be made putting that weight on simply due to the fact that feed prices are low. So in that scenario, I can pay more for a weaned calf and put the weight on. 
On the, on the other hand, if feed prices are relatively high, then we see this, this line with the blue dots, it flattens out. And it's not necessarily that 800 and 850 weight calves are significantly more expensive overall. It's that the price gap between 550s and 850 weights narrows. Okay, so that gets, they get closer together. And the reason being, with expensive feed, I cannot pay a lot for that incoming weaned calf. Uh, the margin is going to be real thin for every pound of gain that I've got. And as a result, I got to get them at a discount. I can still, and, and <clears throat> one of the misconceptions common that I hear is that you can't make money putting on weight with expensive feed. That is not true. But you cannot make money with expensive feed if you're paying a lot for weaned calves coming in relative to finished cattle prices and everything else. That is true. So that's why this price relationship exists. Um, you know, that you, you just can't pay uh, top, top dollar uh, if I've got, a, if every pound I put on costs, costs a lot. And then the, the, the other, um, you know, piece of this equation or this puzzle is fed cattle prices, of course, right? I mean, what's the finished product actually worth on the hoof going to the processor? And you see the same kind of relationship that when fed cattle prices are high, the price differential between 550 weights, 500 weights, and 850 weights is highest. Why? Well, because I can afford to pay a little bit more for weaned calves if uh, the finish the finish price is is fairly high, right? There's a lot of, there's money to be made at the end on the sale as well as the weight being put on. So as a result, I can pay more. When finished cattle prices are relatively low, um, and again, this research came out in 2000, so you can add a hundred dollars to you know. $80 to all these prices if it makes you feel more comfortable. But when, when finished cattle prices are low, this, this slope of this line gets much flatter. And again, I can't pay a lot for a weaned calf if my finished cattle prices are low, unless my feed costs are really low. And, and that's, that's sort of the, the math that gets done is what are feed costs, what are fed cattle prices, what, and, and inventories of current cattle have a lot of impact on, on what's going on there. And so there's a, some moving parts in here that 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 kind of determine what what we can pay for weaned calves and uh, how much money we, we can put on uh, make putting on weight. And then the last thing I'll just say on you know just the some generalities about cattle markets and 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 you know weaned calf prices and everything else. Calf prices tend to be lowest in the fall. So if you took a time you know a, a timeline. And, you, and I know they can vary from year to year. Some years are better than others. But if you took an average over, say, 25 years and which months have the highest cattle prices, which months have the lowest cattle prices, et cetera, you'd find that fall calf prices, cattle prices tend to be the lowest and spring tend to be relatively the highest. Why? Because we live in North America and most people, and because of our climate and the way it works, uh, when winter time is and summer and everything else, Calves are typically born late winter and early spring, weaned in the fall, so therefore there's more calves, weaned calves going to market in fall. Uh, but on the other hand, cattle feeders and finishers, they need calves coming in a lot of times in the spring as well, and they have to pay a little bit of a premium for those because of the fact that there's just tend to be fewer born, you know, in that early fall period ready to be weaned in the spring. So it, it's the same way with crop prices, right? Uh, Cash crop prices tend to be lowest in the fall because that's when we're harvesting in North America. And then in the spring, you get a bit, oftentimes you'll get a much better basis because uh, those, those elevators, they, they, you know, they're not doing a lot of volume during that period because that's, that's not when harvest season is. So similar scenario there with cattle. So for the scenarios that I'm going to run, here are the cost assumptions uh, associated with the spreadsheets and the, the feed prices. Feed prices are down uh, significantly um, this year compared to a couple of years ago for obvious reasons. I mean, corn and soybean prices and everything else was, was much higher a few years ago. They're down quite a bit. Uh, yardage, I'm charging 40 cents a day. That's a, that's a nickel a day less than Carrington charges with their budgets, if you're familiar with those, uh, but higher than the budgets we're using for some of the other backgrounding scenarios that, that have been covered or that, that show up online kind of splits the difference between those interest seven and a half to eight and a half percent. I'm going to use seven and a half. It, it's not going to move the needle a, a lot if I, if I bump it up there. So uh, I wouldn't fixate too much on that marketing costs, vet costs, trucking, 140, a uh, dollar 40 per hundred weight, 
and then shrink and death loss. The one thing I'm not showing on this particular slide here for the cost assumption is in every scenario that we're running, there is a risk protection or risk premium charge. Okay, so that would be like an LRP or something like that, which I highly encourage everyone to use if you're thinking about backgrounding or finishing this year, simply because the high value, as I'm going to show, of steers and even heifers coming into your operation means that if the market moves against you when prices are that high, if it moves against you significantly, the losses could be substantial. And with the scenarios I'm going to show in the in the risk pre uh, the uh, the cost of using some of the, the the risk management tools available being baked in there especially with heifers you'll see that it's it's probably worth buying so here are the six scenarios that i'm using plus the extra seventh which is the slaughter cows uh scenario uh three different uh daily rates of gain for steers uh they're starting at different um weights except for well th these two are starting at the same but one's going out to finish different feed costs of gain per day uh with you know the fact that we're increasing the ration to to add more weight per day on those three steer scenarios and then three heifer scenarios two have the same average daily gain but they start with they start at different weights and are, are sold at different weights so this one's 100 pounds you know less it, 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 in both scenarios and then a, and then a, a much more aggressive heifer ration with a higher feed cost and as i said the a slaughter cow or a coal cow coming in that you're going to put on 350 pounds at two dollars and 27 cents and you don't need to mem memorize these i'll go through them uh in more detail in each scenario so starting with the steers uh these are the prices that uh are used in these scenarios again pulled monday the 28th of october this is an average across north dakota cash prices at auction uh, for the for the monday uh the the previous week's average and so you look at some of the steer prices uh in this here's a, a 525 weight average at three dollars and 21 cents quite a few observations there almost 600 head uh here's a 575 weight average uh lots going around 300 dollars Per, per hundred weight on those quite a few observations there well uh, over over uh, 1100 head sold there so a decent um, decent number going into that that average across and then your eight 800 to 850 weights around 250 bucks uh per hundred weight in, in both of those uh, scenarios but it's a little thin in, in the fall for the, for those size cattle uh and then live cattle prices uh, when I do that scenario, I'm using the futures market for that for summer of 2025. And right now that has it at $181 uh, per hundred weight. So the first scenario, again, 500 to 800 weight calves, uh, 1.8 pounds per day, uh, daily gain. And then that should work out to be based on the ration that we're feeding and the feed costs that I showed, uh, 86 cents per day per head. And here's the spreadsheet that that illustrates everything that I was uh, I was talking about there, starting at 500 pounds, finishing out at almost 800. That's 165 days on feed. Pro projected sales price of 250 dollars per hundred weight, coming in at 320 based on the market prices I just showed. Feed cost per day, interest, uh, our yardage uh, charge, as well as trucking, shrink and death loss, and this at the bottom is that price risk management charge that i'm putting into every scenario uh, as you see here at 56 dollars a head so all that taken in what does it come out to be uh basically break even mainly because this high price of incoming uh, weaned steers at 320 dollars per hundred weight even with relatively inexpensive feed and fairly strong um, prices for for backgrounded cattle just this beginning value being so high at $320. So whether I'm going to auction or buying them or I'm bringing them into my operation at $320 per, per hundred weight, doesn't really matter because, you know, you look at it from an opportunity cost standpoint, I could always sell them for that at auction based on the, the data that we have. So in this case, it's a, it's basically a break even proposition. And what the market is telling you under that scenario is that feeders and finishers are willing to pay a lot for weaned steers they 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 want to put the weight on themselves feed costs are relatively low which as i showed from those charts before makes um weaned calves prices very strong as a result it makes it really tough uh to to turn a profit on steers under that under this 
current fall scenario. And then we have our second steer scenario, a little bit uh, more aggressive ration at 2.8 pounds per day. Of course, the cost is going to go up to feed that ration to $1.15 uh, per day per head. And we start at 5.25 um, up to 805 days or 805 pounds. This would be 100 days on feed. Again, you see the weights have been adjusted up to 805 pounds. The projected selling price still $250 per, per hundred weight. And again, that beginning value, 320 bucks. Not a whole lot above break even. And, and as I mentioned, that price risk management fee is still in there. You know, $12.71 per head uh, profit total, uh, 100 days on feed. Why? It's more profitable than the 1.8 pound per day scenario because the yardage costs are a little bit lower because they, they spend fewer days, uh, you know, in, within the operation, but it's, but it's not enough to offset these high, um, in incoming values of wean steers. It's just, it's just, again, another scenario where the market's telling you, uh, finishers and feeders, they, they high demand for steers right now, and they're willing to pay. Then the final steer scenario, 575 to 1400 pound, uh, pound. So we're going from 575 weaned all the way to finish at 3.8 pounds per day. Obviously this is gonna cost quite a bit more, almost double uh, what, it would, what it would cost to, to the other scenarios that we're doing per day. Uh, you're putting more weight on, so it stands to reason. And you look at this uh, scenario and we'll kind of jump right to the, the expected profit per head is $151 uh, per head. Why is that so much stronger than the um, other steer scenarios? Well, primarily because of the strength of uh, finished cattle prices right now relative to. So this is, again, this actually illustrates why those those incoming wean steer uh, costs are so high and why it's tough to uh, make a make a profit backgrounding because fit with finished steer prices or finished uh, cattle prices being so high. Uh, anyone who's in that business knows this. And so they're willing to pay more for those incoming, incoming steers. And as a result, uh, you can, you can make a profit with finishing, but a lot of that's coming from this projected selling price. If this, if this moves against you, so if you're going to take this route and want to do finish some of your own, highly encourage using a price risk management tool. Cause if this comes down, you can imagine, I mean, your profit is, Obviously, this amount, in this case, $181 per hundred weight times 1,411 pounds. If I drop this uh, 10 bucks per hundred weight, you can do the math pretty easily. It drops, it drops below break even. So that's why if, if this was going to happen, that if you're going to take that route, this, this final price is, is pretty crucial to, to actually turning a profit with this scenario. So the next group that we're going to cover are the heifer feeding scenarios. And these are show a lot more promising and a lot more profitable uh, in the current environment that we sit in than the steer scenarios. Here's the prices that are used. Same source, USDA's auction summary from North Dakota, Monday, the 28th of October. Uh, you can see where the, the heifer prices are being pulled. You look at right around 450 weights, four set right around 288 and then 550 weights around 260, give or take. Here's some 581 average and 262. So that's where much of those prices are pulled. And so our first scenario, as I said, 450 to 750 weights at 1.81 pounds per day. Uh, that comes out to 83 cents per day, or per head per day to put that on. And you look here at the same spreadsheets as the steer scenarios, but obviously the numbers changed for the for the heifer feeding. And we'll jump right ahead to the to the headline. Uh, the returns on this are pretty strong at two hundred dollars per head. Okay, now why is that? Why is that the case? Well, really two reasons. Because the cost feed costs aren't that much different. The interest, lot costs, everything else, trucking. And the price risk management fee those are all the same and the difference being that coming into the coming into the yard coming into the lot they're cheaper or less expensive at 288 versus the other cases being 320 or 300 but the projected sales price is the same so we're bringing them in at a much lower cost and then selling it nearly at the same or nearly the same value 
And, and as a result, that is, that is, that is our margin. That's where that $201 is coming from per head. That's a dollar 18 profit per head per day, even on a low rate of gain. And then the next scenario, uh, it's the same rate of gain as the previous heifer scenario, with the exception of they, they start a hundred pounds heavier and they finish a hundred pounds heavier, still though, 1.8 pounds per day and, and 83 cents. So that's impacted more by your weaning weight and, and, uh, uh, what you're going to finally sell at. And so you look then 550 going, coming in 850 coming out projected selling price, a little bit lower at 850 versus 800, uh, drops from 250 to, to 240 per hundred weight beginning value, 260 bucks, as I showed you from the market reports before and the same number of days in the yard, but this profit goes up a little bit, mainly because the beginning value is 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 where it is and the projected sales price while it's down 10 bucks it's also a 100 pound heavier animal so that so that that relationship pushes this profit up about uh, 23 dollars or so from the previous scenario to 224 per head and that's a dollar 32 profit per head per day very solid uh, obviously leaves a lot of um, room for some things to change and and this this scenario to remain profitable and again i'm going to mention on every one the price risk management cost is baked into this budget so uh, that's 224 dollars even with a basically a, a hedge put in there then our final heifer scenario then is this 525 to 805 but a much more aggressive ration going from 1.8 to 2.8 pounds almost three per day and that cost of course of feed per head per day is going to go up to a dollar twelve but at the same time, uh, we're putting on the weight much faster. And this is by far uh, the most profitable scenario with a return of 250 bucks uh, per head, which is, and the other thing, they're only in the yard 100 days, right? So you're putting, that basically averages out to $2.50 per head per day profit, which is a, a strong incentive to, in this scenario, to conduct it and, and, uh, financially positive for sure, even with the price risk management tool. The biggest the the biggest reason again yardage isn't eating you up very much here because instead of being in the yard for you know 165 170 days, only in there for 100 days, and that 40 cents uh, per day uh, yardage charge comes out to a lot less uh, in this case because of the fewer days on feed. All right, so. It, it is illustrating that the more aggressive ration is the is the more profitable scenario, but it also uh, shows just how strong there is a, a incentive to put put weight on heifers as well. And again, it's you look at the beginning value, how much how much they're worth coming in five uh, two hundred and sixty bucks for in this heifer, heifer scenario versus like 300 for steers, 320. And that just, it just makes such a huge difference, especially when the projected sales price of heifers is near that of steers. And this table here just kind of summarizes all the six, the six backgrounding scenarios and the one steer finishing scenario that I, that I previously just spoke about. And it just summarizes the dollar per day profit and then the total per head uh, profit and loss. And again, you see that that final heifer scenario, 100 days in the yard at 2.8 pounds per day, uh, that's 250 bucks. You compare that to the steer, a, a similar steer scenario, and you're talking about $12.71. Again, I, I know I've said it several times so far on this presentation, but I'll just say it again, that it's that beginning, that incoming price or in that charge that we're charging ourselves for bringing steers into the yard uh, at $300, $300 per hundred weight is just really difficult to basically, it, given where, given where uh, backgrounded cattle prices are, tough to make a profit even with cheap feed. So then you might ask, well, what can, if I want to keep my lot full, or if I want to background over the winter, I have an operation, I want to spread some overhead costs over cattle, do I just go ahead and break even with the steers? Well, one option might be to also potentially sell your weaned steers and go to some of these auctions and buy heifers, given that the price relationship is so much more favorable on the heifer side. You could have a yard full of uh, heifers that you're feeding out, trying to, trying to increase to 800, 850 pounds, and the steers are sold off. 
giving you a lot more slack or a lot more room for markets to move or feed costs to change a little bit and still turn a profit feeding while keeping your yard full. That's that's just an option. There's there's other choices that could be made. Uh, but I get that there are some operations where you've got overhead and labor and other things that you want to charge out over the winter and cover. And rather than taking a break, even proposition on steers, perhaps taking uh, filling your yard with heifers in this case. And then the last scenario I mentioned, cull cow finishing. You know, again, if you have a, a cow who's coming in who maybe is a bit skinny from being out all summer or weaned a calf and you want to put some weight on perhaps to uh, before before a cull cow sale, here's the scenario for that. She comes in at 1,200 pounds. You're going to feed her up to 1,550 pounds, which is 100 days on feed uh, because you're going to be putting on about three and a half pounds per day. And that cost comes out based on the this ration and the and the feed cost that we uh, bake into these scenarios at two dollars and twenty seven cents per day. And similar to the previous spreadsheets, uh, coming in, going out, I put the selling price is the uh, futures coal cow prices, and then the beginning value um, is for you know a leaner a leaner twelve hundred pound cow coming in, and pretty much the same. Uh, interest and, and lot charge and everything else, trucking, et cetera, et cetera, comes out to a profit per head of $203 uh, per head. Okay. So if you do want to do this uh, because of the low cost of feed right now and the relatively strong coal cow prices, uh, that this is a way that you could put on, uh, use up some of that maybe, you know, feed that doesn't have another use for it right now or something like that uh, maybe some low value feed uh, and actually put some value on it is it could be by using using that to put some weight on some coal cows uh, and and sell them out in the spring so concluding thoughts just a summary real quick there's a strong incentive to background heifers this year there usually is a strong incentive but this year is particularly strong especially compared to steers with steer prices wean steer prices being so uh, so high that's the market telling you we want to buy your weaned steers this fall we need to we need to fill up our feed lots around the country and we're willing to pay for it especially given the low low price of feed but there is there the the, the market's also saying but you can i guess if you want to look at it that way go ahead and hang on to your heifers feed them out and then that price gap can close between steers and heifers and there's a there's a definitely some financial incentive to do that uh, and then finally, with the feed cost being low, especially if you have some low grade feed that really doesn't have much of another use, uh, if you want to hold back some cold cows and go ahead and put some weight on them as they've come back, you know, uh, from out in pasture or wherever else and put a few hundred pounds on, there is there is some financial incentive to do that as well. So with that. I want to thank everyone uh, for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me. Uh, I'm, I, I try to respond as quickly as I can. Uh, hope everyone learned something. Hope, uh, hope you have a, a manageable winter, and uh, we'll see you uh, while we're out on the road. Thanks again.